Adventure. Found Pudman on W four Z Y. Crazy. Wake up, America! It's time for the Adventures of Hype Man on W4CY.com, West Palm Beach's number one internet radio station. Here's your host, the Hype Man. This is the Pipe Man here on the Adventures Pipe Man W4CY Radio, and I'm very excited about our next guest uh, because he is a badass musician. And I, I do have to say also right off the bat that when I went to his website, the first thing that happened to me, just looking like real quick, I got a flash of Chris Cornell. <laughs> and he I don't know if he's ever heard that, but... It was pretty wild, so I'm like, well, there's a good step right there in the right direction because uh, I think he I think he is on a parallel level there. So let's welcome to the show, Mark Daly. How are you? Very good. Thank you for having me on. And Chris Cornell is my favorite singer ever, so I'll take that one. <laughs> well, look at that. Yeah, the picture you have on the website, it's like, wow. I was like, it, you know, at first glance, it's like, holy crap. You know, and so yeah, and uh, I'll take that. That's a good boost today, now. <laughs> exactly. So let's start off with for people that don't know you, how did this journey of music start for you? What was that moment in time in your life that you knew music was going to be a part of your life forever? I always loved music, and was all, as a kid, like played in different instruments, and I was always into music, but. I think when I got into like the band scene and the first time I got on stage with a, a full band and that, the, you know, the amps, just the, the drum kit and just feeling that feeling, uh, I have to say the first time I got on stage with a band, I was like, OK, I don't want to do anything else. That's it. <laughs> and that was it. And, and, you know, I want to bring that up, too, because I also, as somebody being in radio and being a speaker, you know, I know that feeling when you get up on stage. But then some people wonder, it's like, well, why do music artists think they're introverts? They get up on stage and they like sing or perform or play guitar or what have you to these masses of people. How could an introvert do that? And maybe you could explain to the listeners what happens when you get up on that stage. It's like you could be off the stage and either you're extrovert or introvert doesn't matter. Once you get up on that stage, there's this like zone that you get into and like, uh, I call it a switch in my brain that just automatically switches. It, it's so true. It's so true. That's exactly what it is because when I, I'm quite shy and quiet in general, but like when I get up on stage, friends that have come see us play for the first time are like, was that actually you? Like you're a completely different <laughs> person. And, and like, cause we're very energetic on stage as a band and I like to rock out. I like to really get into it. I love talking to the audience. I love that connection, the magic, that feeling and then yeah it's it's like an alter ego it's just completely different to uh to who i am off stage but i think that's part of the magic of music yeah it totally is and you know on the other side of it i think and i think it's good for fans to know this type of stuff that don't always expect the artist to be exactly like that when you meet them in real life off the stage because it's just like with me i get all the time like I have my Pipe Man moniker as my radio moniker. But Pipe yeah. Man and Dean are like two different people, but still the same people, but extreme. Like the moniker is the extreme part that you kind of keep filtered totally. on the real part. <laughs> totally understand that. Totally understand right? that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it is... It's an amazing kind of thing, and I think a lot of people don't understand. That's why I'm bringing it up. So Absolutely. tell us uh, a little bit about your upcoming album, Devil's Arms, which is like right behind me there. And uh, <laughs> you like that, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, you have your newest song out, which is really, really cool. Tell us a little bit about that and how – 
because th- I know a little bit, but tell the listeners how this song and this album is kind of like, you know, it's different because it you've really reached out of your comfort zone with it. Absolutely. Yeah, this record is kind of the first one with all the band involved. So it was kind of a really special thing where, the, you know, beforehand I had written the songs kind of on my own or, you know, worked with a producer or something like that. But this record, we went to El Paso, Texas, into Sonic Ranch Studios. Uh, incredible place, first of all. And working with Brian Virtue on this album was just amazing as well. And uh, yeah, this is kind of just a different sound, a different style for us. And like, I think the songs that came out of us at, at that those sessions were it was unbelievable. Like, it was just next level. I think we really found our, like, it was great because we played live together for a couple of years. So we had that, like, you know, we know each other inside out thing. Yeah. And we went in and it was like, I was so curious. As, I was like, what's it going to sound like with all the boys involved? And they just nailed it. Um, I basically went in with, like, acoustic demos and just built from there. And even some of them weren't finished. I wanted to leave them, like, wide open so that the lads could put in their their style, their sound. And it worked really, really well. So we bu- we did a bunch of tracks. The first one came out on Friday. I want to be more. And we wanted to go with like a fun, upbeat rock song that's just fun to play live, uh, fun to listen to. Uh, it's kind of got a mainstream kind of rock sound to it. But then the record is a bit of a roller coaster. There's some there's some deep, dark stuff. There's some heavy stuff. It's got a really nice blend between without sounding like different records. And that's where Brian came into the mix. Uh, Brian Virtue, he just got it perfect where the songs blend but they're different as well and it's a, it's a nice roller coaster and i love hearing all that for multiple reasons one is you know i think it's so important the teamwork and camaraderie that happens in music and you really have to be all connected and everybody puts something else into the funnel and i think that's yeah. when you come out with the best best music you know it's just like I would rather have other people and their perception of what I do opposed to just my own because yeah. you're getting that different viewpoint that maybe you never even thought of. And that, that brings you to a whole different level. It does. For sure. it does. Even the intros, like, you know, uh, I want to be more starts with a bit of cowbell, a bit of drums, and then brings in the song, like things like that I wouldn't have done on my own right you know so See? like those ideas that we just collectively came and and worked on we had like two days of pre-production just to kind of go through everything and which was a short amount of time but it was perfect because we had a bit of pressure but we also had complete creativity and that really shows on the record that you know we were all just in the zone with these ones yeah and i love that you said rock because <laughs> nowadays there are 10 million subgenres uh, or whatever of rock. And really, yes. it is all just rock music. And I love that artists like you are bringing back that term because yeah. it's almost like bands nowadays, oh, God forbid we should call it rock. Let's call it this other fancy name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because people come up with the merch and they're like, oh, how would you describe your music? And I say, it's just rock. It's like, that's yeah. what we're doing. We're ro- we're rocking out and we're playing the songs that we wrote. And it's like, it's just rock. There's no, there's no subcategory. There's nothing like that. It's just, we're just rocking out. <laughs> and you know what else I love about that is that as an artist, of course, you never want to be like put in this box because the whole idea of an artist is to explore and experiment and, and, and all of that. And so if you're put in this little box of your blah, 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 blah then yeah. that's the only music people want to hear from you. It's the only music the record label wants to hear. And then you yeah. get bored yourself, you know, with it. And then you start sounding like everybody else because you're just putting in this formula. So I, I love the idea of just calling it rock. Cause then you could be whatever type of artist you are. Agreed. Agreed. And we, and it's not like we were trying to reinvent the wheel when we were recording. Like we, right. we just, we just did what was felt genuine what felt honest like lyrically honest musically honest just just went with what we felt as opposed to like we should probably do that because that will make it sound like this we just let it flow and there's a there's a couple of tracks on it like brighter days and you lie those are deep those are dark those are 
you know, different tempo. And I think it's really cool that we were allowed to do that and had that creativity just to just be ourselves. I love it. I love it. And I also really liked how you said roller coaster, because to me, I want to listen to an album that doesn't have the same song over and over again, <laughs> you know, yes. and yeah. artists, I know this for a fact, like perfect example. I've talked about it in other interviews, the band, bring me to Horizon. When, when yes. they give Ollie all this shade for all the stuff he's been doing recently, it's like his answer. I love his answer. Why do I want to write the same song over and over again? And, and it, exactly. he goes, it's already been written. It's already been done. And so that's yep. what I love. But other people want to, hey, you should just be this. And that's what I'm talking about. But it should be a roller coaster because like, think of it this way for those listeners out there that like to go from track to track to track. Well, yeah, this is like having your own playlist on one album. That's the exactly. way I look at it. Exactly. And I feel like bands are, you can't, like, it's, it's a lose lose situation because if you, if you stick to the same style all the time, people get fed up with it. But mm -hmm. then if you come way off the style, people are like, well, what are you doing? That's not why I listen to you. So, right. I think exactly. when you're in the, when you're in the studio just like just do whatever it feels real and authentic and genuine and then whatever happens afterwards happens and i, I saw rick rubin rick rubin used to say that it was like write for yourself and the audience will come and i think like that's the best advice that you can give because if you're trying to like 100%. oh if i if i put this in here the crowd might like that bit or like you're thinking about a crowd's reaction as opposed to the music and uh, i think it's important just to stick to stick to your guns I agree. And, and you know, what you find is, is when you try to please somebody, you don't please somebody else. So no matter what, the yes. only way to go is to please yourself because you're not going to please everybody. And you got a better yeah. chance of pleasing everybody by just being real. I agree. I agree totally. And yeah, what it was Rick that said that. And, and I think about too, you know, I'm an old school metal head from the eighties, you know, and I remember I wasn't allowed to listen to crap, you know, like, yeah. oh, you like Slayer now, which they're one of my all time favorite bands. You can't listen to Motley Crue, you know, and okay. stuff like that. And, and yeah. it's, it's like, it's just so ridiculous because to me, I saw something recently, uh, somebody posted on Facebook that I loved is you're not truly a metal head. If you say you only like metal everybody likes different kinds of music and there's different yeah. things. And, you know, do, if you're into music, you're into music. Is there some yeah. crappy music? Is there music maybe you don't like? Yeah. But I wouldn't yeah. say yeah. I only listen to rock even. I don't even, exactly. just even if you, rock. <laughs> to, to, even if you listen to like Ozzy Osbourne, like he's got fantastic melodies. Like there are yeah. melodies there. He's a great like singer melodies. Like, He's great at that. And it's like, you know, is that categorized as metal? You know, <laughs> it's like. Exactly. It, yeah. You know, and it's like, it's melody, it's catchy and it's good. Well, and look at, he did a song with Elton John as an example, yeah. you know, yeah. like, exactly. I love that. And, that and the track actually, I remember that one. <laughs> right. And it's wild because you might have the old school Sabbath fans that be like, oh, you sell out, blah, 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 blah. But you know what? And I remember that term, sell out, poser, this and that. Yes. But maybe if some bands didn't quote unquote sell out like people like to coin it, I don't think it's yeah. really selling out. Maybe yeah. rock and metal would be dead, but it's not, you know? I agree. I agree. And because, yes, it's great to be an underground band, but with a, a little maturity, you realize that, you know, if you really want, Mu your music to be out there it does have yep. to go everywhere it does and then when you're performing at shows you can put the old stuff and the new stuff in and introduce it differently you know and it, it, there's on this tour we're we're playing most of our new album which isn't even out but we just said why not let's let them hear the new stuff and then we're playing a couple of the older stuff for people that are returning from the last u.s tour and i think it's just really nice to blend the two so people that have never heard us before are hearing old stuff and new stuff all in the one night. I think that's really, it's really good. Yeah. And you know, what's cool about that too, the way you worded it is like, 
okay, so you're playing this new stuff before, you know, the album even comes out. That's so old school anyway, because old school was you didn't buy the album by hearing it on Spotify. You went to a live show and you heard the music. Exactly. And we're gone old school as well, because you can only get the, the album right now at shows. And the album's not going to be on Spotify or anywhere until July. So we've, we're have we like saying that every night to the crowd. It's like, if you want to pick up an album, you can get it now. Otherwise, it'll be July when it's out. And then people are digging the new songs and they're running up to the merch and grabbing a CD. And it helps us on the road big time. Yeah. And I think it's just really cool to just be like just selling CDs again and just, you know, meeting people at the merch, signing CDs and getting the, the new music out there that way. It's, it's fun. I love it. I love it. So speaking of which, how, how can people go to your website, your socials, connect with you, uh, you know, check out where your shows are and most importantly, buy your merch. Cause you do have some cool merch on your website and that's the only Thank way you. bands survive today. It isn't, it isn't by getting a million hits on Spotify. Cause then you get like $15. <laughs> I just read an article recently. It was like musicians are kind of like on the road t-shirt salesmen now. <laughs> it's like there's there's an element to it that's true. But um, everything, one stop shop is our website. It's uh, markdailyofficial.com. Um, so all our tour dates, merch, links to everything is up there. And then our tour, like on on the road shenanigans and pictures and videos are going up on Instagram and Facebook under Mark Daily Music. I love it. Uh, and I love shenanigans. It's so funny <laughs> in the United States as such a bigly used word now. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, totally. If somebody's going out partying, they're like uh, shenanigans. If they're going on adventures, what sh- shenanigans are you? like? It's they use that word, word for everything. Word. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You have any other final words you want to leave the listeners with that we haven't covered already that they need to know about you? Well, I'm just super happy to be on, firstly, so thank you for that, Dean. And um, yeah, just I'd like for everyone to check out the new music. Um, the, the first single, I Want to Be More, is out now. There's a music video on the way. We just shot it. Um, there's a bunch of music videos on the way, actually. We just did three in the last week. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's all That's all coming out. So every four weeks, we're going to, four to six weeks, we're going to have a new single from the album, Drip Feed It, slow release, and then the whole thing will drop in the summer. Love it and uh love the music everybody's got to check it out for sure and thanks for being on the adventures of pipe man thank you very much for having me appreciate it thank you for listening to the adventures of pipe man on w4cy radio